The Pakistani flag with the Islamic crescent and star was hoisted above Westminster Abbey during Lent. Now, before the usual type start shouting at me, yes, I am aware that they do this to mark Pakistan Day and they do it for other countries as well. But I do find it a little bit laughable. OK, special prayers were offered to the continued friendship between our nations. The highlight of the occasion, apparently, was that they kept the flag flying all day. Christians are persecuted in Pakistan. Occupations that are deemed low, dirty and degrading, such as working as a sewer cleaner, are reserved for Christians by the authorities, reportedly. Many are referred to as chura, a derogatory term meaning filthy. In August last year, 20 churches and almost 100 homes were attacked. Now, I could be wrong about this, but I don't think there are too many mosques flying the St. George's flag. This is, of course, an isolated incident, but I am old enough to remember back in 2012 when some British Muslims burned the St. George's flag and told the Queen to go to hell because we were knighting Salman Rushdie. Now, I think we might need a few more of Archbishop Welby's special prayers, don't you? Anyone who had a problem with the Pakistani flag over our most prominent church was laughed at and called, and apologies if you find this term offensive, a flag shagger. It makes me laugh, this, uh, because the people throwing that slur around tend to have a load of flags in their Twitter bios. The Palestine flag, the Ukrainian flag, the gay pride flag, the EU flag, sometimes all of them. In fact, in Britain, it seems like the only flag you're not allowed to like is your own. In Luton, the local council has hoisted the Palestinian flag above their building, We've got a hospital in Bromley that unveiled a bridge wrapped in a giant three-sided intersex inclusive flag showing the LGBT plus rainbow. In Glasgow, the council debated a motion from the Greens that wanted to remove the union flag and replace it with, get this, a rolling roster of the Palestinian flag, the Cuban flag, the French flag for Bastille Day, the German flag, the Pakistani flag, the Ukrainian flag, and of course, not to be forgotten, the Scottish flag as well. Now, forgive me, OK? But they're making love to a lot of other flags there, aren't they? Now, compare this to the Royal Mail banning the St George's flag being flown on their vehicles. I mean, they are called the Royal Mail, for goodness sake. Then there's the left-leaning independent running headlines like this. Is flying a St George's flag an act of patriotism or a symbol of all that is bad about England? One Labour council banned the St George's flag because it was offensive to their 16 Muslim constituents. P&O cruises reportedly stopped people flying the Union flag as their ships sailed back to Britain because apparently it was deemed offensive. Emily Thornberry's infamous tweet during the old Rochester election campaign appeared to mock the St George's flag and indeed white van men before our very own Stephen Dixon handed her rear end to her live on GB News. Like he done. I mean, seriously, I can hardly recognise it as the England flag, can you? I mean, England flag is a simple white background and a red cross. Seems to me, why can't they just leave it alone? To be fair, you're not a particular fan of the St George's cross, are you? What do you mean? Uh, well, you, I mean, you had to, you, you, you took the mickey out of someone flying the England flag and you had to resign as a result of it. There is a sense in Britain that we have to bow down to every other culture, religion and flag other than our own. Now, I'm just going to ask a question, OK? Are this lot not the real ones obsessed with flags? Or this lot? I think they are.